Hey there, Holly and Jess here. Today we're going to be talking about some of the Freudian themes in the album Electra Heart. To start though, some quick background info. Electra Heart is the second studio album from Marina and the Diamonds. Contrary to the name, Marina is actually Marina Diamandis, a Welsh singer-songwriter, and Marina and the Diamonds is her stage name. She doesn't actually have a band. The Diamonds refer to her fans. No, how sweet. Now, let's start getting into the meat of it. Electra Heart is a concept album released on April 30th, 2012. Now, a concept album, as the name suggests, is a collection of songs about a specific theme or story. According to Marina, Electra Heart is about, and quote, the idea of personifying love. I felt like a walking broken heart for four months when writing the album at the start, so I wanted to portray that. I liked the idea of writing about the real side of love, not the, baby, I miss you, come back, kind of love. More like the, I'm never going to put myself in that position again, and henceforth, my reign as queen bitch from hell begins. End quote. Okie dokie. Now that we've got some of the background info out of the way, let's start talking about Freud. By the way, for this video, we'll be breaking down the songs in the original UK version, which only has 12 songs. The track list and all sources are in the description. Yeah, very good. Clarified. <laughs> So, according to Freud, the personality is comprised of three different single entities that are all part of one whole. They're not separate or broken or fragmented. Rather, they're different processes that regulate and manage our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Now, these three parts are the id, the ego, and the superego. Now the id is the most primitive part of the mind. It deals with our most basic impulses, including Eros and Thanatos, which we'll be getting to a little bit later. Now the id operates on the pleasure principle, which is the idea that all of your wants and needs and every wishful impulse you have should be satisfied immediately. No nonsense, just right then and there, regardless of any of the consequences. We can see the id at work in Prima Donna. Prima Donna girl yeah, all I ever wanted was the world. I can't help that I need it all. The prima donna life, the rise and fall. You say that I'm kind of difficult, but it's always someone else's fault. Got you wrapped around my finger, babe. You can count on me to misbehave. A prima donna girl. show the wants of her id, fame, adoration, sex, and love. That's like the whole album. That's the entire album? Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. it. Right there. We're done. So next up are the ego and the superego, but let's start with the latter. The superego is concerned with the values and morals of society. Its purpose is to control the id's um, impulses and to make us feel guilt when we done goofed. Now the ego is the mediator between the two. It kind of looks at the id, sees, okay, I, I hear you, I know what you want, buddy, and looks at the ego, he's like, okay, what can we do with that? What, what are we allowed to do with that? Now, the ego does this by operating off of the reality principle, and that's just the, its way of going, all right, I know what you want, but logically, what's the earliest we can do this? In Electra Heart, there's clear evidence of the superego in Teen Idol. The conflict the ego faces as it negotiates with both the id and the superego is visible here. I wanna be a virgin pure, a 21st century whore. I want that my virginity, so I can feel infinity. I wanna drink until I ache. I wanna make a big mistake. She's listing some of the wants of her teen years, those come from her id. Her ego, keeping in mind the morals of her superego, says here's how you can have all that and still be accepted by society. But we can break it down even further than that. Let's talk pleasure principle versus reality principle. 
The conflict between these two is stupidly common. It's everywhere. It's that common battle of like, I want this, but I need that. This is evident throughout the entire album. Electra Hart wants sex and love with another person, but she needs to not be hurt by that person. We've talked about her want for sex, but with a song like Lies, we can tell she's giving in to them. She's being hurt again and again. But in Star and Roll, she also sings. You don't love me, big fucking deal. I never tell you how I feel. You don't love me, not a big deal. I never tell you how I feel. It almost feels like a joke to play a part when you want us to stop. Which demonstrates her restraint. She's being realistic about her situation, and her reality principle is winning out over her pleasure principle. That's some good stuff, that's some good stuff. But that's not all! <laughs> but wait, there's, there's more. more! But that's not all she's singing about on this album. If all she's doing is avoiding more heartbreak, then what's the purpose of songs like Homewrecker and Power and Control? I'll tell you. Now this is where it gets more interesting. Freud eventually developed what is now called his second dual instinct theory, which identifies two main drives in people. One is Eros, and the other is Thanatos, basically your life instinct and your death instinct. He says that Eros includes feelings of creativity, harmony, sexual connection, reproduction, and self-preservation. Kind of all of the more positive things. Whereas your Thanatos represents destruction, repetition, aggression, compulsion, and self-destruction. The negative side of things. It's a kind of a balance between the two. Now at the time, Thanatos was a new concept. It just rocked people's socks off. They were like, whoa, what? What do you mean we might want bad things? And he's like, yeah guys, sometimes you want bad things. He said, um, at its core it sought to reduce the animate to its original inanimate status. It's from our Thanatos death drive that we get masochistic and sadistic behaviors like the compulsion like the compulsion to repeat situations that hurt us and sometimes acting out those situations on others. So that explains Homewrecker. She literally sings about that right here. When everything is life and death, you may feel like there's nothing left instead of love and trust and love. Exactly right. So that's all we've got to cover for today. I hope you learned a little bit more about Freud and his theories, and I hope that now you want to go listen to the entire Electra Heart album because it it's is a amazing. treasure. So good. So good. Alright. Bye guys!